Hi, it's me, Dr. Lee, and thank you for joining me. Today's prayer, I'm calling it, My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. And I will say with, with this, this Bible verse, I never really thought about it until I, I got ready to do this, this, this prayer. But the beginning of this um this year, God had to remind me where my help comes from. And what I mean by that is sometimes in life it's so easy to, to depend on somebody else. Not even, you know, because you have that person to depend on. Not even, you know, thinking about that you may be putting this person in your life. You know, you come to this person for the solution and not go into God. And not even, I mean, like small things, not even nothing that's even in, important. Right? You know, it could be something like, okay, um, just make up something. You may say, well... I need to, I need $10 to buy this pizza. And then when I get this pizza, I got to go and pick up um, cucumber and then drop cucumber off. And then when I drop cucumber, you got all these things you got to do. You're like, how am I going to do this? I'm going to pick up the pizza, drop off cucumber, and then go do this and do that. I got all the stuff I need to accomplish today. Then you get to thinking like, okay, you know what? I can call so-and-so. And so and so would do this, or be glad to do this, or you know, don't mind to do it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't call other people, but sometimes you know you get into habit of doing those things, and whenever life brings you situations, and you're trying to figure it out. That's the key you are trying to figure out instead of taking to God like, okay, God, how am I going to get this accomplished? Accomplish? That your Holy Spirit guiding me, and what God has shown me, like even with the small things, like let's say I'm just in, like a pizza or whatever. You could call this person and say, you know, I'm going to pick up the pizza and I got dry cucumber. Can you help me? You know, can you pick up the pizza or can you do cucumber? Da, 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 da. And then you um you call this person and this day they can't do it because they're out of town. Or, you know, a, a cucumber get sick on the way while you picking up. Whatever it is. I'm saying it's so many different scenarios that could happen. But what God has shown me is that even in some of the smallest things, it's so easy for us to to just call on somebody that we can count on, that we can depend on, you know, because you know this person will do it, or this person don't mind doing it. And that's all fine and dandy. What I'm saying is to get in the habit of contacting God first. So when your schedule gets too busy, you're like, oh, how am I going to do all this? You just say a short prayer, you know. You don't even have to drop on your knees. You know, if you can, do it. If you just may be sitting in your car and say, Lord, help me figure out how to do this. Just, I mean, just include him, acknowledge him. And he may tell you to call that dependable person. He may tell you, you know what? No, you go pick up the pizza. Because I got somebody there at that pizza place that you need to pray for. Or I got somebody at that pizza place you need to give an encouraged word. Or it could be like, okay, no, you need to go because I got somebody there to give you an encouraging word. And so what I'm saying is so easy that we don't think like that. We we get like like so like tied up, like, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. We get this, you know, to worry and stress, you know, how I'm I'm gonna get it done, but how am I gonna do it? So we don't include God. And so when we say our help come from the Lord, when we 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 need help, we need to we need to call on the Lord. We need to call on the Lord, you know, and so and ask him for for help. And so he would guide us. He would guide us what to do. Not saying that he don't want us to use dependable people in our lives, that um, we can. But what I'm saying is to get in the habit. And that's what he's really been working on me because I, I'm telling you, sometimes, you know, certain stuff, I'm like, you know what? I can get so and so to do this. No, she won't mind or he won't mind. Or, you know, so no, you know, sometimes God needs you to get up and go do it because he has somebody there for you to say an encouraging word to or somebody that, that needs to give, you know, you an encouraging word or whatever. Or maybe somebody there, you know, that's just out of the blue. You're looking for a job and that person happened to be at the pizza place. You know, they own all the pizza, pizza franchise. You know, I mean, it's so many, like, scenarios that, I mean, I'm just telling you. I've seen God do some some stuff that, like, just blow your mind. He's like, okay, God, what is the eyes of of this? So, I'm saying you just just include god and i'm gonna give you a short story before i go to our um our verse psalms 121 verse one and two years ago i went to um this store one of those like dollar stores and um them general stores like that and i went into one of those stores and you know everything you know fairly priced and it was like right after easter and they had like a lot of stuffed animals like just and I, then I wasn't married. I didn't have any children. And I mean, it was a lot of stuff. And, and to my surprise, they were like 
10 cent and so so i was like all this stuff i'm 10 cent and they was like yeah we're just trying to get rid of them so i said okay lord all right um i don't have a need for this but okay okay you know i felt like led to, to buy them i was like okay buy these so i i i, I purchased all of them and i mean it didn't cost me much i don't know if it was 20 dollars or whatever but i had several bags of little chickens and rabbits and you know like just all kind of little cute little stuffed animals and i said well you know what uh, you know god god and this is what i said to myself god would tell me you know who i need to give this to i mean maybe i need to give this to some little kids or something you know but i didn't worry about it so i got the um i, I purchased all the little stuffed animals i when i went home i put them in like the guest bedroom in the closet where you know you forget the stuff that even, even exists in that closet so i put it in, in there and forgot about it and i promise you about a year later I needed to get my hair done and I had never, you know, been to a beautician in the area. So I looked in the phone book and I called like two or three. And then I finally got one that said she can do my hair that day and told me to come in. So I went to um, go get my hair done and um, it was another young girl there and she was going to a dance or something. And everybody had, um, was like, um, they were like, you know, so nobody could do her hair. And what was interesting was the the young lady that was in the hair salon. She was um Caucasian. She was a white girl. And not I mean I seen black people, white people do each other hair. But I'm just saying in this in in this part of the um the town, you know, it's predominantly you know like black people going in and getting their hair done. And so she was probably like she may have been sixteen, seventeen, and she um was getting her hair done. And um I think we got to talking and. She said, and the girl doing the hair was a, a black girl, uh, African American girl that was doing the hair. I didn't know her in my first time there, and so the young um girl was telling me how that she had called all these um salons and no one could do her hair. So she came to this girl on her first time doing the hair. She said she didn't care, you know, what color she was in there. She just wanted her hair done, you know, as long as you could do hair. So she came to let the girl do her hair, and I said, okay, well this is my first time here too. So we got to talking, and then the hairdresser said, well, before you got here, she was telling me about, she has this little um organization she started, and she loves to give um stuffed animals to children that's in the hospital, like sick children. She go to the hospital, and she drop off stuffed animals. And I said, oh, that is so nice. That is so nice. And she was so young to be thinking about, you know, little kids in the hospital. And when she said that, it's like the Holy Spirit said, you remember those stuffed animals you purchased? At that dollar store give them to her and i looked at her and i said you know what i have some stuffed animals and i said you can have them and she looked at me she said ma'am thank you but i can't take any used animals she said everything i give is new i said oh no baby these are new i got bags full they are new and i said i was wondering why i bought them but now i know all this is making sense now so i got excited because i was like okay god you set this up to bless this young girl here she go go into a hairdress she's never been um to and, you know, but her not worrying about no color or no age or no where it's located. She just wanted her hair done. And it was, I mean, it was so awesome. And so she told me, she said, well, she said, well, we, um, my mama has a, a shop. Um, and she told me the address of the shop. And she said, well, you take it by uh, my mother and give it to her. Because I guess she was be in school or something the next day. And she said, just give it to her. I said, I sure will. So I um I went to the shop and I dropped out all the bags of the stuffed animals to the mother. And the mother looked at me and she could not believe it. She said, all of these? I was like, yes, all of these. I said, I, I didn't know why I was buying them. I said, I just figured I'd give them to some kids or something. God would tell me to do. She said, oh, my daughter is going to be like so overwhelmed, so happy. She said, these are so many stuffed animals. So what I'm saying is that when your help comes from the Lord, I don't remember now if the little young girl was you know, a praying girl. That I don't remember that. So I'm going to be honest. But somebody probably was. I don't know. But it was just so interesting how, like, a year ahead of time, I'm buying some stuffed animals in a store. I don't know. Really I was in another town. I went in this store, to, to, and I purchased all these stuffed animals. And I put them in my closet. And God used me just going to get my hair done to, to bless this girl. So what I'm saying is that we didn't include God in your day-to-day -day walk. You never know that God already got something worked out for you. A year in advance, two years in advance. I mean, before, you know, you even created, before you was born. But you don't know that. We don't know that because we have these finite minds. We only can think so far. So just like the little girl that got all these stuff from me, we didn't even know each other. But God brought us together. So your help comes from the Lord. God uses people. And you never know who he will use. You never know what color they'll be, what size, how educated or uneducated they'll be, how famous or how non-famous they'll be. All you know is that your help comes from the Lord. And that's what God is teaching me more and more about. 
that even for the small things, to include him, to include him. So I'm telling you to include him. So Psalms 121, verse 1 to 2, my help comes from the Lord. Um, It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And so I'm just going to say it again because that's my boy David saying that. You know, David, like everybody like love David. Like David, David, David make you feel good. Like, okay, David, he was human. Like you can see how he was human like you. So uh, if you hadn't read about David, just read up on David. And um, I, I'm getting excited just thinking about, you know, David and the Psalms. I can imagine David, you know, ah, man, now let, me get, let me get off the subject. But Psalms 121, 1 to 2, this is the NIV, verse 1 and 2. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. And when I think about I'm lifting up my eyes to the mountains, I'm lifting up my eyes to whatever problems, circumstances, stresses, whatever the unexpected, whatever is coming my way, whatever is coming my way, that my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, from the creator. Yours do too. But you got to realize it. You got to walk in this. You just can't read it. Or listen to it and not apply it. The enemy, he he got so many Christians fooled that that they said I'm going to church and I'm going to Bible study, I'm reading, I'm praising, but they won't apply none of this to their life. They won't be obedient. I mean, what what good is a million dollars in the bank if you don't go access it? What good is a billion dollars in the bank? What good is a hundred dollars in the bank if you do not have an ATM card, a checkbook? Don't you know it even exists at this bank? What good is it for you? It's not any good. So know that your help comes from the Lord. When you know these things, you can apply whatever may come your way. So, because God probably, you don't know, could have somebody right near you to help you get through this. Could be somebody way off, a complete stranger. I mean, I don't know because I'm not God. But what I do know, if we include God and let him work it out for us, he'll do that. So, okay, let's pray. I'm going to um, bow my head. You can bow your head and close your eyes however you want to do. But, okay, we stand on Psalms 121, verse 1 and 2. This is NIV. Father, I come to you. Standing on Psalms 121, verse 1 and 2. In your word, it says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? Father, I know my help comes from you. And when I'm in my day-to-day activities, Father, sometimes not even knowing, I seek others for help, others for advice without going to you first. Father, please forgive me. Forgive me for doing this. Have your Holy Spirit to help me to walk in better judgment of coming to you first and not to man. Father, I know you may use man, but ultimately, when it's something that I'm in deep thought about, I need to come to you, include you, acknowledge you, and know that my help comes from you, even though you may use man. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for this knowledge, this wisdom, and the ability to apply this Bible verse to my life and to stand on this Bible verse, Psalms 121, verse 1 and 2. Because, Father, you are my help. You are my help in all situations, in any situation. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for having me to grow in this area. I love you. You are the best. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, with that, know where your help comes from. That's all I'm I'm trying to say. Know where your help comes from. Because some people that may have a lot of money or a lot of popularity or a lot of this and that, You may be believing, thinking your money is where your help come from. Baby, let me tell you, when sickness come, when stressors come, when things that you, the unexpected come, money, good looks, being cool, popularity, don't mean a thing. Does not mean a thing. So, whatever, whatever your situation is, whatever, no matter how rich, I stress that, no matter how rich, or how poor, or how pretty, or how ugly, or how clumsy, or not clumsy, or whatever it is that you got going on. God wants you to know that your help comes from Him. 
That's what's important. Your help comes from him. Don't let the devil sidetrack you with all this other stuff. Don't let him sidetrack you with all this other stuff. And if I remember correctly, I think it was um was it Absalom in the Bible, David's son. I think it was Absalom that you know he was such so such so good looking and he had the long beautiful hair and you know and you meet people like that today and they just put too much on their looks and how nice they look and how fine and sexy they are. Like I said, oh, how rich they are, how popular, how good I can play this sport, or how good I can sing, or whatever, how good I can preach. Whatever it is that you're good at it, boo, I'm here to tell you, it got less to do with you than what God put in you. So take it back to creator. If you happen to be rich, you happen to be cute, you happen to be talented, you happen to do whatever, know that your help comes from the Lord. Don't think that you had anything to do with any of it. <laughs> Don't forget that. Don't forget. Too many people forget that I'm so good, I'm so special. You had nothing to do, nothing to do with it. Now, God gave it to you, and he can let you work on it and grow, whatever. But know, but know that he's God. And know that your help comes from God. And if you came across this video and you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, all you have to do is repent and ask Jesus Christ just to come in your life. And it's just, you know, tell God, you know, say, I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. And if you do have a relationship with Jesus Christ, all you need to do is grow your relationship walk in obedience read his word fast pray praise be a light let your light shine be let your action show let your action show that you love god and let people say you know what you're different you're you're different i mean when someone can come to you and tell you that i don't know if you ever had it happen but i had it happen to me and someone was like you're different you're different you're different when you hear that and they can put, they're trying to put their finger on why you're different, you know? And they're looking at you. That's just such an awesome feeling because you know what the difference is. You know what the difference is. And so let your actions, your actions speak. And depend on God. Know that your help comes from Him. And as always, I'm Dr. Lee. And thank you for watching. Remember, remember, remember that your help comes from the Lord. No matter how small or how big. Your situation is. Your help comes from the Lord. I'm Dr. Lee. And thank you for watching. Let go. Let God. And keep it moving. Take care.